Let's get into just first mover, kind of the wrap up for the week before we kind of go into this Easter weekend. And then, of course, we'll be back with the show on Monday. But we have Taiwan chip manufacturer TSMC remains a crypto skeptic. Major cryptos decline. So the company, which was burned during the last major crypto bear market, did not mention mining in its last earnings report. Bitcoin and Ether drop. So prices, Bitcoin and Ether and other major crypto cryptos decline amid ongoing macroeconomic uncertainty. But Taiwan chip manufacturer has stayed largely out of the crypto mining fray. Technicians take is Bitcoin's bullish counter trend signals require weekly price closes above 40K. Uh, we're at 40,458. So that's interesting to look at. It could be uh, a good sign right now as we look at it, you know, post. Uh, I think this morning we woke up at 39,000. As you can see there, it kind of goes over your top gainers. Dogecoin at plus 1.6%. Obviously, anytime Musk does anything, Dogecoin pumps. I don't know why that's related. It's hilarious, but no matter what, he just, it always pumps. Top losers, interestingly enough, and uh, all of these are in relation to Ethereum, so pay attention. Solana down 4.5%. Cardano down 4.4% and Ethereum Classic down 4.2%. The biggest losers of the week are all essentially kind of surrounding that Ethereum move to proof of stake, right? It looks like the mainnet shadow fork went good. People are, you know, super bullish on Ethereum. The investors are. And when that happens, you know, we had started to see like Solana and Cardano and Ethereum Classic start pumping like in this preparation for something to go wrong on Ethereum. And to me, this is just a signal of the public's perception of the Ethereum shadow fork on mainnet going well. Is that the case? I would have expected the public perception with a delay of a few months to actually have gone down for Ethereum. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. This is really interesting and it is definitely related to it. So other than that, let's go ahead and get into this big one, which was the, the TSMC, because, you know, we're all about the, the hardware, the infrastructure. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, TSMC, posted another record profit for the quarter, hitting the $7 billion mark on continued strong demand for electronics and gadgets. But absent from TSMC earnings was talk of mining. On the company's earnings report by for revenue by platform, you can find categories like smartphone, high-performance computing, Internet of Things, and automotive, but nothing about crypto mining. TSMC tends to be secretive when speaking about its customers. As a pure play semiconductor foundry, the company has to be agnostic. Its engineers will fabricate chips for the fiercest of competitors like AMD and Nvidia, so it stays silent on any sort of market commentary. It always it wasn't always this way though. During the first major Bitcoin mining boom of 2017, TSMC specifically called out crypto's rise and mobile's decline in a press release for its fourth quarter 2017 earnings. Quote, our fourth quarter business was supported by major mobile product launches and continuing demand for cryptocurrency mining. Quote, moving into first quarter of 2018, we expect the strong demand for cryptocurrency mining will continue while mobile products seasonally will dampen our business in this quarter. What does this mean? Remember what happened in 2018? Ha ha ha. Also, I can rhyme. That's the way it goes. We'll make a rap. But. If you guys remember, we had that big old dip. So I think like this is a, they're gun shy. They're gun shy to tell you that they're making money from cryptocurrency mining because from the perspective of their shareholders, it was like, oh, you know, this crypto mining stuff's not going to go anywhere. We're making a whole bunch of money. And then boom, like it crashed. <clears throat> that wasn't the case. And I think it's smart not to not to relay that information of how much you're making from crypto mining uh, in their position, especially as we see the market moving sideways. I think they're gun shy. <clears throat> but this being crypto, fortunes fall as quickly as they rise. As crypto historians know, 2018 was a bear market for crypto, and this was reflected in TSMC's earnings as the year continued. 
By the third quarter, uh, executives were blaming the further weakening of the cryptocurrency mining demand for missed missed revenue guidance. By the end of the year, the language had been revised to a big drop. It's almost a double digit. The 2018 bear market also hit other semiconductor companies hard too. NVIDIA said that it had to glut of uh, it had a glut of unsold graphics cards in its inventory alongside an 18% fall in the company's stock price, shaving $23 billion off its market value, which NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang, Jensen, I'm just going to call him Jensen, that's how I know him, called the post-crypto hangover. Fast forward to 2022 and TSMC is still skeptical about crypto's long-term viability, especially when it's also dealing with a period of high demand from other customers. It's understood that TSMC just doesn't want to allocate its limited fab capacity to businesses that it considers fair weather friends that fluctuate order volume on seasonality, crypto's notorious bull run and bear markets. And we haven't even mentioned Bitmain in early 2021 prosecution Computers in Taiwan charged Bitmain with setting up clandestine front companies to poach engineers from TSMC to help it accelerate development of new business lines and diversify away from crypto. Given Taiwan and China's tense political status, the Taiwanese government does not allow Chinese firms to establish research hubs to develop technology for export to China. Chinese firms are allowed to set up branch offices in Taiwan, but they need to be specifically registered with the government and are closely monitored. TSMC still allows for Bitmain to fabricate chips in its facilities, but TSMC requires the company to attest that its crypto mining chips don't violate any of TSMC's intellectual property. If Bitmain does, the company will be banned and its chips discarded. So it's easy to see why TSMC doesn't prioritize the crypto industry. The company bet big on crypto during the last bull run, and it was burned when the bear market started. Given the continued demand for semiconductors worldwide, there's also plenty of demand elsewhere. So we're seeing basically TSMC react completely different this time around than they did in 2018. They're gun shy. I think a lot of people are reacting completely different this time uh, than they did in the last bull run, myself included. I think a lot of y'all in chat as well, too. Uh, I am actually more positive than I am last time, uh, specifically as in regard to a cryptocurrency. But I understand exactly where they're coming from. They're going to be cautious. I think a lot of the investors, like even institutional investors that have been Uh, through this from the hardware perspective side of things. So your NVIDIA's, your AMD's, your TSMC's, whatever it may be, are going to be a little bit more gun shy. The interesting thing is we do have entry into the market from Intel, which is really, it'll be Intel's first time actually doing anything, anything significant within cryptocurrency for hardware, both on the GPU side and the ASIC side. And so we are going to get more hardware availability uh, thanks to Intel and they're going to be kind of new to the scene. So maybe they'll be super bullish on it and they'll still have to, you know, utilize a lot of these fabs and so on to help uh, obviously manufacture the parts and so on. But I think this is kind of interesting to see. I don't have a lot of insight on it other than as we talked about, you know, the 2018 crash, TSMC's gun shy, that sort of stuff. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here, or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.